Hey there, lovely people of the internet and um, followers of the blog or readers of this article in, in particular. Um, just talking about lighting setup number 29 in regards to this commercial, um, which we shot. Where do you think you're going? Quite a while ago, I think about a year ago or something, but sort of just getting around to doing some lighting stuff now. Um, yeah, so if you don't know about the blog, mattscottvisuals.com, and then I've got a lighting section where I've got a lot of sort of breakdowns, and I just talk about how I lit stuff, why I lit stuff, and what gear I lit it with, um, with some diagrams and shit like that. So, um, in this video, I just wanted to talk a little bit about how I graded it, and um, it's really, I guess it could be interesting to see how people do different things. Um, this is, like I said, this is a year ago, so I probably wouldn't grade it like this now. Um, just in terms of this structure, it looks a bit crazy, <laughs> but I'll show you anyway. Um, and it's also a good example of showing you the look that we got in camera, because we didn't shoot this raw, we shot this ProRes. Um, so for example, if we just um, disable all of these grades, um, yeah, you can see, that didn't work at all. Let's just disable all of these. Yeah, and you can see um, <laughs> how difficult it was to actually create contrast and give people enough exposure um, to get them to look where you want them to look. Uh, it was really challenging and you can read about those challenges in the post itself. Um, but now that we have the content and we need to grade it, um, yeah, so with this we, we made it sure that a lot of the look was in camera which is something I try and do a lot more these days. Even though RAW is really good, it still saves a lot of time and it makes more sense to try and create a look in camera. Uh, which is why I use the blue gel um, to create that separation in the background, use the tungsten light to light people's faces, and then used a non-blue gel daylight balance source to um, sort of create a middle ground to help sort of um, soften out that um, color contrast. So the background is 201, the hair light is 56K, and the light on her face is 3200 Kelvin. And I try to sort of keep that running throughout. And then there's a, an extra final little light source, which is the lightning strike, which is that one there. And I talk about that in the blog post too, if you're interested, but you'll notice that that's kind of purple, purpley pink. And um, I chose that because I've noticed that in real life, that lightning sort of has this sort of purpley pink color to it. And um, you'll see that lens flare on the torch. Mark Kuhlenberg actually put that in post. And um, he also fixed the front of the torch as well, which had sticky tape on it and a little bit of gel. Um, and it was really low powered. Um, so yeah, anyway. So how did I grade this? Um, well, it's, a, it's an interesting topic to talk about a little bit of a segue into, um, I get a lot of compliments about my grading, which is lovely. It makes me feel really good. <laughs> um, but often, the grade is quite a small component of how I achieved a certain look. So often people are like, man, your grading's so amazing. Like, can you help me grade this? Or what did you do to grade that? Or what light did you use to grade this? Um, and the, the real answer is my grading's not actually that good. Um, dare I say my lighting is good or, or my, um, my idea of how something should look in camera and how I put a lot of effort into mastering that craft is much better than my grading, um, which just makes grading easier and makes it look like I might be a really good colorist. <laughs> but I'm not really, I just, I feel like I'm much better at lighting um, and, and sort of figuring out how to capture something beautifully first. And then of course, grading can really help make that look even better. Um, yeah, so with that out of the way, let's just have a look at um, some of the challenges that I faced with grading this. Um, but also interesting to see the levels captured for a really dark night scene. Um, yeah, because like this, the challenge of this shoot, as you'll read in the article, was the, the power was out. So there's supposed to be no power whatsoever. So I can't use a lamp here and I can't have her bedside lamp on in the background. And, you know, we just can't do any of that. So the only options we had was to use a torch and moonlight outside. But to make things even more difficult, um, I had to, if you look at this lighting setup, I didn't have a lot of room to create that moonlight. So like there's literally like a meter or half a meter between this light and this window, which is not ideal. Like I probably, I would have, if it was actually at nighttime, I would have gotten rid of these, which I wouldn't need actually. And I would have had a much larger source further away. 
And um, what that would help achieve is less of a light source look, which is exactly what this looks like. It just looks like there's a light outside. Um, so even though I think we got away with it in the end, yeah, in, in, the challenge was not only to light something at night and create a night look, but was also the challenge of keeping it all confined in this tiny little porch area, um, along with sprinklers on the window and all that sort of crap. So yeah, it was really challenging, but really fun, and I'm pretty happy with the results. Anyway, so back to the grade. <laughs> um, like I said, I graded this quite a long time ago, and um, maybe the same core principles are here, so we'll just run with it. Um, so normally what I'll do, or these days what I'll do is I'll um, add contrast on the first node. Um, so that looks like that's pretty much what I've done here. So all I've done really is just lowered the blacks a little bit to the floor, and I haven't corrected the blues in those, as you can see. And um, just raised the mids as well, and you can see her face is pretty well lit, but we could probably emphasize that a little bit more and pull some of the pinks out. Um, and then another thing I did later on in some of these other shots was actually mask a lot of the scene out because I really struggled with creating enough contrast on the day um, because of spill. So if we turn these masks on, you can see I've animated these masks that basically just darken the wall off. Um, so it's a little bit time consuming to do, but I think it really makes a nice difference. Um, and then there's other sort of focus windows that sort of brighten up the face just a little bit. Um, I, even, oh, I can't even believe I went to the effort of bringing up the, the pings in the eyes there. But all that stuff helps. I mean, if, you, if you really care about the job and you, you're getting paid to do a good job, you may as well. Um, then just add some sharpness around here and things like that. Um, but yeah, so, so the general philosophy is that I will create a contrast in the first node um, and then I'll start adding saturation in the second node before I fix white balance. And I do that because it's easier to see white balance problems or um, sort of see how you want the white balance to be shifted when there's more color there, if that makes sense. Um, so you can see I've done that here. And how have I done that? It looks like I've used a Luma versus Sat curve. Yeah, so I've raised the saturation in the mids and just sort of feathered that off towards the shadows and the highlights. Um, and then I've done a white balance correction, which there's actually nothing on there, so we can delete that. <laughs> Okay, so what have I done here? So I've gone to the blue channel and I've backed it off. Um, so there's the original saturation of that back wall and I've backed that off. Um, you can always refer to this, that saturation on the back wall comes from this LED panel here, which had a blue gel on it, it was very, very low. Um, yeah, so I've backed off the saturation of the blue in that one and then what I've done here um, is just removed some of the magenta from the skin. So you can see quite a bit of magenta here and then when I turn that node on, it brings it sort of closer to green. It's probably a bit overdone, actually. It's awful. <laughs> um, and then what I've done is sort of split up the face in a bunch of parallel nodes. So one is here, and it looks like I've just, yeah, just raised the white point, like so. Um, and keeping in mind that this white point here is exactly the same as using a gain white point here. But I just like curves. Um, and then the other thing to consider when you're grading shots like this is you sort of get carried away and you're like, yeah, I'm going to make this shot look awesome. But then you need to remember that it needs to fit in with this shot and needs to look like it's part of the same scene as this one. And then it also needs to match this one. So the way I've just um, sort of haphazardly changed this now to suit my taste, it doesn't actually match this. So you really have to be careful with that and um, pick a wide shot to work from and sort of go with that. So then I've warmed up the face even more, especially on one side. And then I've added a little ping in the eyes. And looks like this one is, let's have a look. Ah, yeah, so the lips. I desaturated the magenta in the lips for some reason. <laughs> um, and then what have I got here? So helping add some contrast by taking brightness off the wall there. And let's just see what that does if we had that off in the original form. It is kind of distracting how bright that wall is, right? And now it's not. So subtle changes like that can really help, I find. Uh, and then I've got a final contrast node or a final sort of, I guess, exposure node. And that may be 
um, is something I do these days is I add that towards the end and that helps me match it to another shot, if that makes sense. So I sort of get this nice look and then I use this sort of final curves to back it off and then add a vignette because that's what you do. <laughs> Don't add a vignette just because. Um, so then some of the other shots, this one is like, was much more difficult to grade because it was so underexposed. I mean, if you look at that, look at the lack of contrast on this dude's face. I mean, that was really challenging to, to fix. Um, but if we just sort of go through it step by step, first thing is I'll add contrast. And I've added contrast using the YRGB, which also increases saturation. I'm actually clipping blue here out the window. Fix that. Um, the second one, what have I done? Looks like I've changed the color of the blue and changed it from sort of magenta -y to more of a teal blue. Yeah, you can see some of the magenta in that roof is now gone and it sort of becomes a greeny teal color. And same with the highlights in the pink, uh, in the blue as well. And then I've got a desaturation node, which brings that blue to a more realistic, dare I say, nighttime blue, um, and also matching the previous shots, of course. Um, and I've just done that probably using Luma versus, I mean, Hue versus Sat. Yeah, so I've just dipped that down. And probably a Hue versus Hue. I don't know. So I wonder how I fixed... Ah, that was in this one. Anyway, so um, the next node is fixing something here. Ah, it's his face, awesome. So if we go and have a look at that full screen and we turn it off. So that's off and then I've turned it on. So I've just drawn a mask around here on these highlights on Ben's face and I've just raised those highlights a little bit. Cause really we want people to be looking at Ben um, and unfortunately we just don't have enough light on him. <laughs> And then I've got a little mask here just to sort of back the side off. What else have we got? Okay, so this one, um, you can see the blue highlights here. I've sort of neutralized the highlights and made them white. And I've done that throughout. And it just gives it less of a, a blue nighttime feel and more of a neutral look, even though it's still very blue. Um, I think it just helps. Hmm. It's awkward. And what have I got here? So, more contrast. I'm really trying to close in. Um, and I guess these are things that I would have done on the day, if I could, and if I had time and the resources, and basically the know-how. Like, it's sometimes really difficult well, it's always really difficult to have soft light go exactly where you want it to go and not spill onto walls. Um, so sometimes it is actually easier to do it in post. Not as effective, of course, um, but still possible. And what have we got here if I turn that on? Ah, okay, cool. So this is a, a light from the torch, I guess. So I've just created a mask there, softened it out and tracked that. And that brings our exposure back up because really, I mean, that's extremely, extremely dark, especially for a TVC, daytime TV. Um, you really want to bring those levels up. Um, and now we're starting to see some noise, um, especially in the chroma channels. But I think it helps, it definitely helps. And then on the outside of that note, I've darkened things again. Um, and what that does is make it looks, it makes it look like his face is brighter. Um, so if you go here versus here, it again helps the brain and helps the eyes focus on Ben's face. And then I've backed off. So basically as I go through my grade and I've, I've, I've found a place that I'm like, yeah, this is looking fine, I like this. But then it's always good to have a look at it full screen and look at it close, so get close to the screen and then walk away from the screen and have a look at it from a distance and then look at it in a small thumbnail. And every time you look at it from a different perspective at a different size, you'll notice things that distract you because you need to think about what is the goal of this frame. The goal of this frame is to see the concern and um, this is the sort of questioning nature of dad's face. Like I'm just going outside to fix a power line. Um, you know, so we really want to see his face. And when I zoom out, 
this is kind of distracting, um, this light, this highlight here. So I just backed it off. So the least distractions you can have, obviously, the better. And here it looks like I've fixed a, a green sort of tint. So you, even though I've neutralized the highlights and then backed off the highlights on this window so they're not so distracting, I've then got a final node which brings all of our blues back to that same neutral blue rather than having blue, banding green, banding teal, blanding, banding blue, banding yellow, back to white. So there's um, where I had it and there's sort of where I brought it back to match the rest of the commercial. And I just did that in the final node. It looks like just in here. And um, yeah, so then I've just gone through the entire commercial with the same um, concept, same idea, um, often saving grabs along the way and then sort of always going back to say, hey, does this one match this one? Does this one look like it could be in the same hallway? Do those highlights out there match? And you can see they don't here. Um, that's because these are old ones actually and I've regraded this, but anyway, they <laughs> should and that's the idea. Um, so yeah, this wasn't really a tutorial, but maybe you found something useful or just for me, if I was watching this for the first time, it would have been interesting to see what images came out of camera and then sort of what I did with those. Um, so as you can see, it's not really a magical special technique that I've used or any LUT that really makes things look cool. It's more just that I'm just trying to create focus, balance contrast and match the shot. Um, yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed this. I'm also going to run through um, or do a full article on this one, which was shot in the same location on the same day. So uh, cable PI, and as you can see, it looks um, way different. The migrating's very different, um, but the same technique, the same ideas are in play, and that's the same hallway there, um, which I feel like is a really good example. So there's this hallway, and then there's this hallway, um, same day, but obviously looking very different. Um, so yeah, it was really fun to actually try and do that, and um, hopefully you find this useful. Have a great day. <laughs> See ya.